Today, we cover the most brutal and savage shark attack story from great white sharks, tiger sharks, to bull sharks. Today's video is sure to make you think twice about going into the ocean ever again. Hit that like button and subscribe right now for many more real stories. It was September 1st, 2001. The United States was in the grip of fear after hundreds of shark-related deaths over the course of just a few months had made everyone uneasy about visiting beaches or surfing in the water because of species like the bull shark that had become notorious for danger to humans. These sharks can grow up to nine feet and are considered one of the most aggressive species of all. With their jaws, they can gape open up to 20 inches, revealing heavily serrated teeth these sharks are even known to be cannibalistic, eating their own kind, as well as other species. The summer of the shark, as those few months later became known now, seemed to be coming to an end. But the victims of these shark attacks left terrifying tales in their wake, including the tragic demise of a 10-year-old boy who had been mercilessly mauled to death in July by a bull shark in the shallow waters of a Florida beach. For 10-year-old David Peltier and his two brothers Robert and Josh, summer vacations were ending and the next school term was about to start in just a few days. The three young boys missed the long and warm summer days and wanted to visit the beach one last time before the fall set in. The boy's father, Richard Peltier, decided that the Sandbridge Beach, about five miles south of Virginia Beach, was the perfect place to spend a relaxing Saturday afternoon. It was a popular vacation spot with shallow waters and warm sand, and they had generally enjoyed their time at the beach earlier that year. The boys loved the beach, and the shallow water meant it was safe to tread a few feet closer to the shore and feel the wet sand beneath their feet. The ocean seemed calm and clear, and young David would often stop to admire the small dogfish that would swim up close to the shore. After relaxing and some light surfing, a few hours had passed. Richard had suffered enough and decided to remove the tether to his longboard and attach it to David's surfboard. At this point, they had gone more than 50 yards into the water, but it was still just four feet deep. Richard's other two sons were just 10 feet away, and the sea looked calm with the occasional light waves. It was a safe environment to teach the young boys how to surf and balance in the water by themselves. Or so he thought. Richard sent off his son David just a few feet further into the water, and that's when he felt some commotion beneath the water. When he looked down, what he saw sent shivers of terror down his spine. In the flowing water below, he could make out the figure of a shark about eight feet long. Then, as it swam closer to the surface, he saw the dreaded fin. The horrifying sight, combined with the fact that his children were still several feet away from his reach, was enough to turn the warm summer afternoon into a living nightmare immediately. He screamed at the top of his lungs for his boys to get back on their surfboards and frantically made his way to 10-year-old David to try and drag him back to safety. But then, as he held David's arm, he felt a strong tug from the other side. The boy let out a scream in agony as the shark bit into his thigh, trying to pull him deep into the water to be devoured. Richard realized that he was now locked in a cynical tug of war against a sea monster, and between them was his own son. The shark refused to let go and began shaking its head left and right to try and chew off a bite of the little boy. Richard, his wet grip slipping off of his son's arm, did everything he could to save his son, even at the cost of his own life. He put his right hand between the shark's jaws and tried to loosen its grip. The animal then bit down with greater force and managed to tear off the child's entire leg. Richard hit the shark as hard as he could on its head and even punched its eyes to try to throw it off. Momentarily pacified, the shark swam back to the ocean with David's limb. Richard gathered his senses and realized that his son was bleeding profusely. He picked him up and tried to swim back 50 yards to the shore as fast as he could, with an ever-present danger of the shark returning. Those 50 yards felt like 50 miles as he carried his son on his shoulders back to safety. The beachgoers had realized that something had gone terribly wrong, and the rescuers had reached the scene by the time they made it back. 
Richard finally made it to solid ground and spotted his other two sons crying and screaming for their brother, who was unconscious and losing blood fast. Every passing second now was heavy on little David's life. He was slipping away, held in his father's hands. Richard, crying and pleading for help, tried to revive his son. The shark, with its gaping 17-inch jaw opening, had torn into one of the biggest arteries in his thigh, and no lifeguards at the scene were able to stop the rapid bleeding. An ambulance had arrived at the scene by this time, and Richard hurried him in to save his life. The father had now realized the gravity of the event, and for the first time, thought that he might actually be witnessing the death of his beloved son before his very eyes. David was rushed into one hospital. The bleeding had been controlled, but the amount of blood that he had already lost put him in dire straits. The following was a long night for Richard and his sons. He sat inside with his son at the hospital bed at the Children's Hospital of King's Daughters, pleading to God to save his son's life. At 4 a.m. the next morning, David's life finally slipped away, and he died from the massive amount of blood lost from his missing leg. The tragic incident sent shockwaves throughout America and revived fears about shark attacks. The beach was closed briefly the next day, but reopened after helicopter surveillance declared the area free of sharks. But nothing could bring back the life of 10-year-old David, who in his last moments awake witnessed the pure terror of being torn to pieces by an aquatic beast. Professionals thought that the shark was a sandbar species native to the Atlantic Ocean but a report a month later claimed that it was a bull shark identified by its fin and its proclivity to swim in shallow waters. The species is known to be highly aggressive and for tearing away the flesh from its prey with violent movements of the head. The tragedy haunted Richard for many years afterwards, and the memory of his son moves him to tears whenever he thinks of the events of that fateful day. It's always important to understand the risks involved while entering the domain of these super predators. For them, it's just lunch. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more real animal encounters like this.